Hey there, Python trainer Ruven Lerner here. What do you think about the current US economy and its future moving forward? Well, in this video, I'm going to use Pandas to analyze the results from the University of Michigan's Consumer Confidence Survey. This is something that's been coming out for many years now, and it's considered a really good survey to understand what consumers think of the economy. And it'll give us a chance to really play with Pandas the two questions that I'm going to try to answer are, of course, from the latest Bamboo Weekly newsletter, where every single week I ask you questions having to do with current events and ask you to answer them using Python and Pandas. So let's jump into this. I'm going to switch to my browser here. So these are the two questions that I want you to answer, and I'm going to do this along with you. One of them is read the CSV file into a data frame. We're going to get that file in a moment. Create a date column with a date time D type based on the month and YYYY columns and make that the index and keep only the columns that start with ICS, ICE, ICC, or PX1. Wow, that's a lot. And then the second question, once we have that data frame created, then we're gonna look at the most recent month-to-month -month percentage changes in the three different measures that the University of Michigan um, group comes up with. And we wanna check the most recent, not only month-to-month, -month, but year-to-year -year percentage changes as well. So I'm gonna define the file name here. I put it on my system and you can see it's a zip file. Pandas has no problem whatsoever reading a CSV file if it's inside of a zip. So I'm going to say import pandas as PD. So we're going to load that up. And now I want to create a data frame. So I'm going to say here PD equals, I'll say, uh, sorry, DF equals PD read CSV. I'm going to say here file name. What could possibly go wrong, right? This is the easiest thing in the world, and I'll take a look at DF. And we look at it, and it looks a little funny, right? And then I look at the bottom where it tells me how big this data frame is, and I see it's 206 rows. Okay, that makes sense. And one column, one column, something's a little weird there. And the problem is basically that the first line of the file is what determines how many different columns they're going to be, because when it reads the CSV, it sort of needs to figure out what's going on. So I need to get rid of that first line. I need to tell, hey, hey, ignore that first line. The actual headers and the columns are defined on line one. That's, say, the second line. So I'm going to say here, header equals one. And the moment that I do that, oh, ho, ho, things look totally different. Now it's 205 rows and 360 columns. And yes, 360 columns. It's a very, very wide data frame. But that's because they have all these different measurements. And we're going to look at a few of them as well. Okay, so far so good. But... I also said that I want us to create a date column based on the year from this YYYY and month. So how are we gonna do that? Well, I like to use method chaining, as you might know from watching my previous videos, subscribing to Bamboo Weekly, reading my books. So I'm gonna say here assign, and assign temporarily adds a new column to our data frame. I'm gonna call it date. Well, now what? Well, what I basically wanna do is say something like YYYY plus month. And I want to turn that into a date and time value. So what I could do is I could say something like PD to date time of these things. That's not really going to work, but it's kind of in the direction of what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this not just a direct invocation of a function. I'm going to invoke it indirectly by putting this inside of a lambda. And lambda always gets in this context an argument. And we'll put that in the df underscore parameter. And that just shall we say, underscores the, the point that it's a local variable. And then I can say here, then I can say date time of df underscore of y, 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 y. And then we'll say plus a minus. We're going to put a minus sign between them. And plus of df underscore of month. So I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to run pf date time on that. And then we're going to get a date column, right? Well, no, we're actually not going to. And that's because if we look now, if I get rid of this, and I look at the D types, the FD types, we will see that both month and YYYY are integer columns. And we can't just add integers to numbers there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say dot as type of stir here and dot as type of stir here. And now if we look at our DF, oh, sorry, let's just like take a look at this. It actually worked, no errors. And if we look all the way at the end, we will see we have date there and date is indeed a date time value. You can see, you can notice this. We could check the D type, of course. But if you look, we see year, month, and day. We didn't say what day it is, but that's because PF2 date time assumes that we want the first of the month if we didn't say otherwise. Okay, so we added that. Fantastic, how can I make that column now the index? I say dot set index of date. And now when I look at it, look at my data frame. We've got the date column there 
as the index. Fantastic. But then I said, I only want to keep the columns that start with those different things. To do that, I can use dot filter. And filter has a bunch of different ways that you can filter either rows or columns. I want to filter the columns based on their names. I'm going to say here regex equals. I like to use regular expressions. I love regular expressions. What can I say? I'm going to make this a raw string just because whenever you use regular expressions, it's a good idea to use a raw string. I'm going to anchor it to the front of the string with the caret. And then I'm going to say it could be any of these things. It could be ICS or ICC or ICE or PX1. And so what we're saying is keep only the columns whose names start with one of these four things. Kablam! And that's indeed what we did. We kept many, many fewer columns. We can see now there are only 30 columns. I know 30 is still a lot, but it's way, way less than whatever, how many hundreds we had before. And now we have a data frame that really represents the data we want to look at and work with. Okay, so let's just double check. I read it in, I created the date column, daytime, daytime D type, based on month and Y, 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 has those four column uh, prefixes, we are doing great. And now we can actually try to answer a question that has to do with the data. So I'm gonna say here, what are the most recent month to month percentage changes in overall or all of ICS, ICC, and ICE? So once again, I'm gonna set up a method chain here. And now I'm gonna say something like this. I'm gonna say here, DF, and I only want three columns. So I'm gonna say here, ICS all, and I could say ICC all, I guess I could use a regular expression here too, right? And I could say here, I C E all. And I get those three columns and I get them through the most recent report, which is on the 1st of January, 2025. Actually, it's just from January, 2025. And now I can say dot PCT change. And what that does is it gives me back a new data frame with exactly the same index and exactly the same columns. But the values are no longer the original values, rather they represent the percentage change from the previous row. And we can see then that the numbers have gone down and down and down, right? Minus 0 0.03, zero, minus 0 0.05. So this means it's a 3% decline from the previous month. And this means it's no decline from the previous month. No, no growth, no decline. And this is 5% less than the previous month. Okay, so it looks like the numbers are actually going down. And if I want to check uh, per versus the previous year, just sort of move this in a comment here, then... I can say PCT change of, and we can say here periods equals 12. And then it will not be comparing each value with the one right above it. It'll be comparing the value with it 12 above it, which given that we have monthly data, we'll get it year to year. Fantastic. And if I want just that last line there, I can say dot tail of one, and we get that last line. And here we get dot tail of one. And we're doing great. And now if we go to the survey of consumers on the Michigan side, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see it. We will then see, let's see, so we had month to month here, should be right, minus 0 0.03, zero minus 0 0.05. And that is not true. <laughs> it is just like not even close to true. Well, what if we look at like the raw numbers here? What if I don't look for percentage change? What if I just look at the last numbers? So 71.7, 75.1, 69.5, and we go back here, we say, oh, Oh, they announced the February 2025 data, but the data set they released doesn't include it all. It's still only back to January. And so, of course, the comparisons are going to be different. So how am I going to deal with this? Well, I mean, cry, right? But beyond that, what I can do is let's add a new row to our data frame representing data from the most recent month, which would be February 2025. All right? <laughs> so let's do that. How am I going to do that, though? Well, what I really want to do is say something like df.lock of 2025 02, we'll say it's on the first of the month, equals, well, what? I'd like to be able to say just for the three columns we have, ICS all, ICC all, ICE null, uh, all. But I'm going to have to do it a little more cleverly than that because there are many other columns, and those columns... I don't want to put in zero. I have to put in something. So I'd rather use NAND. So I'm going to say import NumPy as NP. And then I can say here equals NP NAND. And then I can say df lock of 2025 02 01. And then we'll say here comma ICS all, ICC all, and ICE all. Those will all be, let's do this here equals, and I'll take the numbers from the site, I wrote them down, 64.7, 65.7, 64.0.
These are, by the way, relative measures, these numbers, right? So it's not like this is dollars or percentage or something. This is just like the numbers. But if I do this, I will really be messing up my data frame. Why? Because I'm using a string here and I want it to be a time series. I want those to be date time values. So once again, we can say pd.2 date time on this string. And then I'll say here also pd2 date time on this string. And then we will actually be adding a new row based on a date time. And then we'll actually have a time series and all will be good. So now that I've added that, let's redo our most recent thing. So let's do month to month. And we see, oh, ho, ho. It's a 9.7% drop, almost 10%, and then a 1.2% drop and a 7% drop. I'm sorry, there's a 12% drop and a 7% drop. And if we go back here, we will see, look at that, 9.8, 12.5, 7.9. We have indeed come up with the same numbers as they did in Michigan. And if I do here year to year, If I then say percent change of periods equals 12, then we will get, that's 15, 17, and 14. And we look there, 15, 17, and 14. We have successfully recreated the data that the University of Michigan researchers came out with. Pretty snazzy. All right. I hope that you enjoyed this analysis of these first two questions from Bamboo Weekly. If you want lots more questions and problems and challenges using Pandas every week, exactly along these lines, Every issue has about five to seven questions. And uh, I will be uploading the Jupyter Notebook that I used here along with all the other notebooks in the GitHub account for my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think. Let me know what topics I should explore. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back real soon with lots more about Python and Pandas. Thanks for joining me.